Every iteration of GNOME brings just subtle changes, but this time's release particularly stands out. I mean GNOME 47 is packed. There's faster and more efficient screen recording support, new official support for accent colors, a bunch of features for tablet tools, and even better core performance. This feels less like a typical desktop environment update, but more like a comprehensive overhaul of an entire operating system. Let's start with the accent colors. GNOME settings now officially lets you change accent colors of the default theme. Many apps already take advantage of this, while some apps don't react much like maps, but there are a ton which do react like calendar, calculator, clocks and more. And that's not the end because I personally have worked and extended this feature even further to third-party themes with the help of Evolve version 1.6. Evolve is a modern GTK theme manager with support for GTK 4 and there are a ton of cool features which includes adaptive theming which adapts applied theme colors according to the set wallpaper, a dedicated themes or icons and extension store and a lot more. Check the description below for related links in order to access the latest alpha and test it out yourself. The entire GNOME desktop along with its apps received an overhaul in terms of colors in order to accommodate the accent color feature in a better way. Subtle changes that you might notice includes inside the settings page mainly a multitasking page which has got a new uh, some new assets. Previously they were quite needlessly attention grabbing with a lot of solid colors but now it's mostly outlined. The change matches the design of the image in uh, mouse and trackpad uh, section mouse and trackpad page which no longer has these solid white colors like they were in the previous version. Uh, they are now replaced with a monochrome asset which respects the accent color. Similarly, some buttons like the red button at certain places got revamped and now tends to have a more outlined style in a less attention grabbing way. The shell has some small updates. There are newly designed full screen dialogues which replaces the login, shutdown, reboot, authentication page. Uh, save dialog and more with a version that has more margin and padding this is an added advantage for touch based devices although i find them a bit excessive the new about page pop-up animation which was introduced in gnome 46 apps uh, now replaces most of them most of the older counterparts including preferences pop-ups in many apps it's everywhere clocks weather settings files and more i covered this in gnome 46 how the pop-ups now transform into a dismissible bottom bar in small screens so those features are also available in uh, the preferences page uh, along with the about section and other pages which were like pop up previously they are also getting replaced with this new style it's really uh, nice and it doesn't stick out of the screen uh, of the window which is great they also introduced a new modern circular progress bar already in uh, it is there in discs camera and even in settings i hope this will replace all the circular progress bars in the next update across the entire GNOME desktop. Also, GNOME apps receive a ton of updates with every iteration and this time it is no different. There are a lot of updates. So let's start with the files app because this is literally the most used app. Honestly, when I first opened it, I freaked out. I mean, did just GNOME remove the much needed quick locations or what they like to call the XDG directories? They're all gone and replaced with just start, recents, uh, networks and trash. Well, network is a recent addition. Other locations tab isn't available anymore. The mounts are now directly shown in the sidebar. The quick locations or the XDG directories are now just normal bookmarks. I guess they did not add them since GNOME OS is just meant for testing. It is a nightly build. The distributions which provide production ready ISOs like Ubuntu or Fedora will probably add them as bookmarks anyway. So it would look like they just swapped with the elements below the separator and they will be shown before the mounts. And now if you find any of the XDG directories useless, you can actually remove them from the bookmarks um, although there's no option for adding a folder there through the right click menu as of now you have to click here in order to access it or you can also use the shortcut Control plus d but that too is a bit weird because it doesn't add the selected file as the bookmark but it just adds the opened directory as the bookmark not selected file but selected directory Okay, the compression dialog is also now modernized. It takes a bit of extra space with the disabled UI elements, but that also gives the user a hint that other encrypted compression methods are also available, which can be toggled somehow. Previously, this wasn't the case until the user clicked here to change the file type. And again, this is uh, in the new style, better. 
for smaller screens too. The pop-up is adaptive and it is contained within the app. Other smaller changes are also there too like icon size control is moved to the right side of view changer along with some show hidden file options. Search location settings does not open as a pop-up now inside GNOME settings but has a separate page. The file picker in certain apps no more open as a separate window but now looks like it is a part of the application in GNOME. Okay, next, the Epiphany web browser. This time, GNOME Web got the maximum number of features. There is new support for autofill, there's a new search bar for bookmarks, a privacy report feature, a control shift Dell shortcut for the clear website's dialogue, uh, importing of password from CSV files, improvements in sorting the bookmarks, the UI for autofill dialogue, UI for bookmark, which also includes the sidebar instead of the popovers, and more. They have actually brought back the ability to set an image as a wallpaper when it is installed as a flatpak, added a prompt dialog for confirmation when installing a web extension, replaced the bookmark properties popover with a redesigned dialog, and reduced the size of the preferences dialog, adopted modern libbudvoita spinners, uh, like I told you earlier about the circular progress bars and new floating bar style from Nautilus and re-enable search in preferences dialog. Next is settings which has also got a lot of changes and here they are straight from release notes. Starting with the changes mentioned under Wacom, there are a number of updates for graphic tablets and I would have actually tested them out but unfortunately my graphic tablet is dead so I tried to use it a number of times but it just won't work. Anyway, uh, here are the updates, they are available on the screen. Now uh, next we have users page which got some updates. The add user dialog is now modernized. Password enforcing is now respected according to pwquality.conf. Usernames with underscores are now no longer misinterpreted as mnemonics. The color setting is now modernized hence making it look much more consistent. Display got some bug fixes which prevents panel crashing when closing the laptop lid. And nightlight settings got a new icon. Network got a number of changes, now the QR code dialog contents are readable by the screen reader. Property rows are now used to show uh, Wi-Fi hotspot information. 6 GHz is now added to supported frequencies. Online accounts have also got some changes. Microsoft Windows Live Provider is now renamed to Microsoft. MS365 Provider is also renamed. New account dialog now closes when account creation is complete. And now some changes that I notice myself are here too. Starting with the notifications page, uh, each option under this page has a separate page or a sub page instead of a dialog box which was shown previously. Information is now divided into different categories and better represented. But the change isn't just here. Same goes for the alternate character and compose key in keyboard, uh, app settings page and the search location selection option for the Nautilus file manager in the search page like I mentioned before in the Nautilus file manager section. Certain pill buttons in the settings are now large and expanded. Here is one example in the mouse and trackpad page. Much of the test page inside this uh, sub page of mouse and trackpad remains the same except for the signals on single secondary double click which are now more attention grabbing when clicked and they no longer respond to middle clicks. Accessibility got some subtle changes. The screen reader option is now placed at the top instead of the bottom under the seeing section of accessibility. The test flash has a separate large button in the hearing section. Pointing and clicking section got a new active window on a hover option so whenever you move your mouse to a new window it will now come to focus if you turn this feature on. The entire crosshair line section is now contracted instead of having the entire thing open and disabled. This is a good move. It makes the settings page very compact. At least this page very compact. Uh, next is privacy and security which got some cleaning. I don't see the device security option here though which received a lot of criticism. I don't really know if they removed it in the GNOME OS or uh, it is actually removed. I probably did not find it mentioned in the release notes due to some reason. But anyway, next we have maps. So, uh, and trust me, here we have a lot of things to cover. So the first thing you will notice uh, is the vector map. So uh, this feature was introduced previously, but it was not set as default. The main advantage is whenever you zoom into the vector map, everything will remain crisp. And also the added advantage is it is adaptive to the system mode. So it can blend uh, according to the dark or light mode. And using the vector map as default confirms the retirement of the raster map. And GNOME has also mentioned it in the latest release page 
of maps. Next we have public transit routing. GNOME Maps now supports transitions, making public transit routing more reliable and accessible. Clicking on the location now shows a small info panel with the image of the place, the population and some info they get from a fetch from Wikipedia. They could have worked on a faster way to get the images though. Um, it takes a bit of time. I'm pretty sure I have a very fast internet connection. Next is updated highway shields for more accurate navigation visuals. The search entry has been fine-tuned, avoiding focus grabbing when modify keys are pressed. Next we have some usability improvements. Map interactions are improved. Clicking the map background now unselects the previously selected places. It offers a cleaner and more intuitive user interaction. It's actually an expected behavior. They should have done it earlier. Next is improved zoom to animation which makes navigation through maps uh, smoother and quicker but it's still not perfect. It does not give that vector feel yet with the text. I guess it will be fixed in the next update, but as of now, it's pretty messed up. It's looking like a kind of combination of raster and vector because it's not updating in real time. What they could have done is not zoom the text, but instead of that, just place the text according to the movement of the position in the vector map. So that simple change would have solved this issue. Next are some redesigns where several dialogues are now powered by Libert Vita and various accessibility improvements which are also there. The export as image now asks for a location to save. Previously there was a lower element which showed um, and let you pick the location but the problem here is you might forget to set the location which meant the file got saved at the default location and the user didn't know that location. So it caused a bit of problem. I guess this is a much better and normal approach. Next is the Clocks app. The Clocks app got some UI updates. It now looks less saturated or rather more uh, use of transparent coloring. There's not a lot of that unnecessary contrast. Inside System Monitor, the Processes tab is now swapped with the Resources tab, which now is set as default on launch making much more sense. Also, the icons are changed a little bit. Disk Usage Analyzer has a ton of changes. The entire user interface now looks much more modern and beautiful. The Disks app also has a super cool overhaul with GTK4. It looks very nice. Next, we have GNOME Console uh, Preferences. Inside GNOME Console has a new scroll behavior option. Uh, I saw a number of new apps too. Don't really know if they would be included in the default apps anytime soon. There's Showtime, a new video player which officially replaces Totem since it has, it still has no GTK4 update, it is still in GTK3. Uh, there's a new audio player that is Decibels and a new PDF reader named Papers. Pretty clean user interface, GTK4 looks lovely in all of these apps. Again, for the existing document viewer, it is still in GTK3 and I guess again Papers would be the replacement. Okay, so that is all for today, thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.